Next, we have two scenes from Lucian's Dialogues of the Dead. Lucian, who lived around 125 to 180 AD, was a satirist who wrote in the Greek language. His Dialogues of the Dead contain sarcastic and comic dialogues. The first scene is between Menippus and Hermes. Hermes is the messenger of the gods in Greek mythology. He was a defied trickster who also served as a psychopomp, or an escort for the dead to help them find their way to the afterlife. Menippus was a cynic and a satirist who lived in the third century BC. He was originally a slave who amassed a fortune as a moneylender, lost it, and committed suicide through grief. In his prose and verse, which were all lost, he discussed serious subjects in a spirit of ridicule. He was called an earnest jester. And now for a trip to the netherworld. Hermes, where are all the beauties? Show me around, I'm a newcomer. I am busy, Menippus, but look over there to your right, and you will see Hyacinth, Narcissus, Nereus, Achilles, Tyro, Helen, Leda, all the beauties of old. I can only see bones and bare skulls, and most of them are exactly alike. Those bones, of which you seem to think so lightly, have been the theme of admiring poets. <laughs> well, show me Helen of Troy. I shall never be able to make her out by myself. Uh, this skull is Helen. And for this, a thousand ships were launched, which carried warriors from every part of Greece. Greeks and barbarians were slain and cities made desolate. Ah, <laughs> Menippus, you did not see the living Helen. Or you would have said with Homer, well might they suffer grievous years of toil who strove for such a prize. We look at withered flowers and what can we call them but unlovely things. Yet, in the hour of their bloom, these unlovely things were things of beauty. Strange that the Greeks could not realize what it was for which they labored. How short-lived, how soon to fade. I have no time for moralizing. Choose your spot where you will and lie down. I must go to fetch new dead. The next scene is between Menippus and Tantalus. Now Tantalus in Greek mythology was a king who for his crimes was condemned in Hades to stand in water that receded when he tried to drink from it and with fruit hanging above that receded when he reached for it. Thus the word to tantalize. And now Menippus and Tantalus. Tantalus, what are you crying out about, standing at the edge and whining like that? Oh, Menippus, I thirst, I perish. What, not enterprise enough to bend down to it, or 
scoop up some in your palm? There's no use bending down. The water shrinks away as soon as it sees me coming. And if I do scoop it up and get it to my mouth, the outside of my lips is barely moist before it has managed to run through my fingers and my hand is as dry as ever. A very odd experience, that. But by the way, why do you want to drink? You have no body, and the part of you that was liable to hunger and thirst is buried in Lydia somewhere. How can you, the spirit, hunger or thirst anymore? Therein lies my punishment. Soul thirsts as if it were body. Well, let that pass. As you say, thirst is your punishment. But why do you mind it? Are you afraid of dying for want of drink? I do not know of a second Hades. Can you die to this one and go further? No, that is quite true. But you see, this is part of the sentence. I must long for drink, though I have no need of it. There is no meaning in that. There is a draft you need, though. Some neat hellebore is what you want. You're suffering from a converse hydrophobia. You're not afraid of water, but you are of thirst. I would as life drink hellbore as anything, if I could but drink. Never fear, Tantalus. Neither you nor any other ghost will ever do that. It is impossible, you see. Just as well, we have not all got a penal thirst like you, with the water running away from us.